so hello everyone uh, firstly uh, thank you so much for joining in uh, my name is vikas agarwal i'm the founder of aif and pms experts so today again a very special day because we have with us uh, mr rakshit uh, ranjan from marcelus well he doesn't need any sort of introduction but uh, for those who have joined for the first time and want to hear him for the first time for their benefit let me have the pleasure of introducing him so rakshit is a portfolio manager at marcelus he is uh, also a co-author uh, for coffee can investing so he along with his colleague and uh, uh, and saurav mukherjee all of them have authored a book called coffee can investing which happens to be one of the uh, largest selling book uh, in india and uh, he is now a portfolio manager at uh, uh, marcelus managing consistent compounding uh, compounders since inception uh, so he's going to complete now uh, three years at marcelus and he also happens to be a co-founder uh, at marcelus so uh, we've been invited him uh, because uh, uh, when we talk about uh, compounding and power of compounding we thought he would be the right person because in their book also they have mentioned a couple of uh, times the power of compounding how it really works and how it is helpful for all our investors so therefore we thought of inviting him and uh, today we'll understand more uh, from him in terms of how does the power of compounding works in stock market more particularly uh, in terms of creating uh, wealth uh, so i mean yeah over to you thank you choose the 20% scale then in 10 years it will be 6x in 20 years it will be 36x and in 30 years it will be 36 multiplied by 6 which is 216x 216 compared to only 64x with a 3% cagr column right so so that's how big the the difference is uh between say 15% cagr and 20 then you extend 20 with even bigger right and again let me just remind everybody i don't think here has only a 3 year investment horizon we all have longer than 10 years right uh, so so whether you invest in a particular pms gold asset or real estate whether you invest in these assets uh, for 2 years or 3 years or 5 years doesn't matter what matters more is where was your overall net worth invested over the two decade three decade time horizon uh, in the long run right if you can if you stick to quality that could be quality fund 1 for the first 5 years and quality fund 2 for the next 5 years it could be quality fund 1 for the next 30 years whatever it is if you stick to quality it is meaningful uh, to your uh, to your investment outcome uh just moving on think about it like this uh let's say you have a you have a portfolio which compounds at 20% each year right this is a different way to look at power of compound this is actually talking about consistency of compounding not just the the rate of compounding itself right so if you've got a portfolio which compounds at say 20 20 20 20 each year right the value at the end will be roughly 6 crores right so it will become 6 crores think about it like this what if you invest in a little bit of higher risk higher return and you say that the volatility will be high so i'll have 30% as a good year and minus 10 as a bad year right if you do that your outcome is nothing right if you in fact say that i am better than the second column i am better than the 30 minus 10 i'll actually do 40 0 and hence my average will be 20 right if you do 40 0 40 0 40 0 your outcome is at least 15% lower right so that's uh, one step ahead of power of compounding it's the power of consistent compounding right because Uh, somebody might say that 20% each year versus 40 0 40 it's one and the same thing it's not so, right so just just bear that in mind when you when you get excited about a product which might give you 40 0 40 and hence an average of 20 it's significantly worse off compared to 
2020-2020. Right? Add to it, obviously, the psychological factor. In 40-0-40-0, you won't be able to invest your entire hard-earned money. Whereas in 2020-2020, it will be easier for you to invest your entire hard-earned money. Because low volatility will mean that you can, that you can put more eggs in the same basket. High volatility will mean you won't want to put more eggs in the same basket, All right? So, so not only the 6.2 crores versus 5.4 crores is the difference. The difference is that the 6.2 crores will be a small, uh, a much larger part of your overall net worth. 5.4 crores will be on a much smaller part of your net worth, All right? So, so that's also an outcome of consistency or lack thereof in your compounding journey, All right? So that's the second uh, way to put it. Uh, this is a third way to put it. This is this is coming from uh, uh, coming from uh, the Coffee Can Investing book, which uh, uh, Saurabh and a uh, couple of my colleagues, uh, so, sorry, which uh, Saurabh, myself, and one of our colleagues from Ambit, uh, the three of us authored, uh, called Coffee Can Investing. In that, we had given this chart in a chapter called Expenses Matter. Right? What this does is it says that let's look at two funds. Right, and let's say a 40 year investment horizon. Uh, uh, if you look at a 40 year investment horizon across two funds, where both funds are compounding at 15% gross return, gross of expenses, and within that, fund A has an expense ratio of 0.1%, fund B has an expense ratio of 2.5%. Right, the difference in outcome is as big as this. This is only on the basis of expenses. This is what 2.4% delta in expense ratio can do to a basic 15% compounding at a gross level. The outcome is two and a half times higher with a lower expense ratio, right? And now somebody might say, Are, are who pays 2.5% expense ratio these days? Uh, think about it. If you are churning your portfolio, so most larger funds today, uh, not so much in the PMS, I think. I don't have too much data about the PMS, but at least in the mutual fund industry, the turnover ratios are comfortably north of 80, 90, 100%. Right? For many funds. For many funds. If you've got a fund where the turnover ratio is more than 100% versus another fund where the turnover ratio is 10%, right? The delta between churn will have an impact on your brokerage on your capital gains tax because a low churn will mean you will defer the capital gains tax payout into the future and before you make the capital gains tax payout you will compound the fund at your level whereas if you keep paying capital gains tax simultaneously side by side side by side you are not compounding the tax corpus before giving it to the government Right. So, so that's also a massive delta. So capital gains tax is a delta. Obviously, long term, short term is also a factor. Brokerage is a cost. On top of it, you've got uh, price impact. Any large fund which has got 100% turnover is certainly going to cause massive price impact every time he churns the portfolio. And that price impact on the stock while selling the price will fall before he gets the selling finished while buying the price will rise before the buying order is finished. That price impact is something that the client pays, right? So that's what expenses also do uh, through power of compounding to your outcome. Worth bearing in mind, right? Uh, now coming to the, the next piece, which is what if you pick up a bad stock in your portfolio? Power of compounding reduces your downside significantly. So what this chart shows, this is again from Coffee Can Investing book. What this chart shows is, let's say you have a two-stock portfolio. The first stock compounds at 26% positive CAGR. The second stock compounds at minus 26% CAGR. You have a two-stock portfolio. You allocate 50 rupees equally, right? And you build a 100 rupee portfolio. The outcome of this portfolio is not zero. If you leave it untouched, the outcome of this portfolio is 18%. 17.6 as the chart shows, right? It is not zero. 
theoretically many people think that if i have got two stocks which give you 26 and minus 26 then the outcome of my portfolio will be near zero compounding it won't be near zero it's actually very close to 26 i mean in this case it is 18 the point being let's say you build a portfolio of 10 or 15 companies or 20 companies right provided you can ensure that more than 2 thirds or 3 quarters of the portfolio has been chosen correctly even if you have one or two mistakes low churn and long holding period will ensure that the eighth eighth wonder of the world as vikas calls it power of compounding will take care of your uh, drag on the performance from one or two mistakes being made in the portfolio it doesn't matter right so don't worry too much about it provided you can have a 70 80 90% <laughs> success rate and this can apply e- even in not a, within a portfolio for uh, let's say people on the call if you are buying two mutual funds two pmss uh, one direct equity portfolio and hence exposure via let's say five products if four out of five you've chosen correctly it's a home run you don't have to worry about all five being correct provided you get convinced about the four out of five in order to hold them for a long enough time period if you think the four out of five which have delivered for you was luck and you don't stick to them for a long time obviously this won't happen this chart won't deliver the way it is showing it to you yeah so that's uh, that's one other way to put it and one final example that i wanted to do on power of compounding was uh, this valuation piece and i'm sure whenever the q and a opens in this call many of you will talk about valuation of our our uh, uh, consistent compounders uh, pms constituents right p multiples are high this that or the other just remember that share price of any stock is a product of these two factors on the screen in front of you one of them is a compounding factor provided you pick up a compounder and the second factor is not a compounding factor pe multiple doesn't move from 10 times to 100 times to 1000 times but earnings profits of a company they can go up from 10 rupees to 100 rupees to 1000 rupees over time right provided you have a high rate of compounding on earnings the non compounding factor is not important over longer time horizons obviously provided you have a compounding engine on earnings which lasts for a long period of time another way to put it is the simple standard pe multiple approach doesn't factor in longevity of compounding right and hence the fair value of a stock might be actually 200 times if it trades at 50 times it's cheap the only problem is in order for you to ensure that you are convinced about a 200 times fair value of a stock you will have to believe in the longevity and hence the ability to compound earnings over a very long period of time despite knowing very well that over the next 10 years 15 years there will be too many black swan events too many gst demonetization covid god knows how many uh, crises will come provided you can convince yourself that the earnings engine will keep firing for that particular company over say a 10 15 year period at a healthy rate of cagr then the pe multiple is made redundant at 50 times 60 times because it doesn't factor in longevity of growth right so so that's uh, that's one way to put it and i mean some of you if you've watched our previous webinars you might be aware of this slide what this shows you is it quantifies right if you've got earnings engine firing at zero p multiple largely doubles or halves across the cycle right sensex nifty their p multiple at the bottom is 13 14 times their p multiple at the top is 28 30 times right it's a doubling halving so is for asian paints for hdfc bank for uh, even bharti airtel indigo everywhere over the longer term p multiple largely doubles or halves right if you catch a doubling of pe over at 10 years period it's a plus 7% compounding right plus 7% doubles in 10 years minus 7% halves in 10 years right so whether you catch doubling or halving of pe doesn't matter 
to a 0% earnings compounding engine because your share price outcome will be unhappy. Right? A plus 7, minus 7 are both unhappy outcomes. Whereas if you pick up a 25% CAGR, let's say, right, in the earnings engine, and again, I'm saying, provided you are convinced that for a 10-year long period, 25% will sustain, then and only then will you say that 7% positive or negative from P multiple compression or expansion is a redundant factor in the nature of the outcome. Obviously, many of you will say, hey, 32% is much better than 18. Why should I go for 18? I want to go for 32. I mean, that's like, that's like saying, I've got hand on hand of God on my head. And with the hand of God on my head, I can, I can gun out a doubling of P every time I invest in a best quality company. Uh, it's okay. Not everybody has a hand of God. We don't. And hence, if you can figure out a way where power of compounding can make luck factor redundant in your equation of investing. Yeah. And there's nothing better than that in terms of getting low risk, high return. Right. So on that note, let me just move to our, uh, our yeah, so philosophy. Before we uh, go to the next slide, uh, Rakshit, sure. it's a great uh, wisdom and insights from your end um, in terms of power of compounding. And this subject is very close to my heart. So I'm emphasizing a bit on that. And there has been a lot of requests which, which has come from a lot of investors also and they wanted to know more about it. So let me do a small myth for, uh, for Marcellus here. Assuming that your AUM of Marcellus as an asset management company is 5,000 crores today. And let's say it continues to compound at 15%. I'm considering a very uh, realistic or a lowest number out here. And let's say it grows by 15% year on year. In five years... Uh, this 5,000 becomes 10,000 crores. In 10 years, it becomes 20,000 crores. And in 20 years, it becomes uh, 16, six, uh, in 30 years, it becomes almost 1,60,000 crores, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, 30 years will be, uh, sorry, you're, you're doing a 15% CAGR, right? Yeah. So 15% CAGR is uh, more like 4, 4x in 10 years. So 4 into 4 into 4, which is 64. Yeah, so Six, that's 64 time. times. Yeah, 64 times of 5,000 crores. Yeah. That's the kind of uh, number. So human minds are not, I think, uh, made to calculate these big numbers, isn't it, Rakshit? Yeah, you don't have to worry about big numbers. See, that's like saying... I mean, so, so let me give you big numbers as a policy. Um, India is a population of 130 crores, right? Right. Relaxo footwear manufactures 20 crores pairs and sells it every year. In a population of 130 crores. 20 crore already wo kam, bana ke bech hai, right? And then you say that uh, Marcellus is saying Relaxo can compound at a rate of say 20% CAGR over the next 5 or 10 years. Agar 20 crore already ho bana hai, 20% CAGR kar dala, so <laughs> where will that uh, uh, production number be in 10 years? And where is the population to wear those footwear? Right? So that's, that's one way to look at it and say that Relaxo at 20 crore pair production and selling on an annual basis in a country with 130 crore population is approaching maturity or saturation, not maturity, sorry, saturation. Yeah, that's one way of putting it. Now, let me give you another way of putting it. India is today a, a, a country with more than 45 to 50,000 crores of revenue from footwear sales every year domestically. So domestic sale of footwear in a year in India is 4, 45,000 crore, 45 to 50,000 crore per year revenue, right? Uh, out of that, Relaxo is only about 2,500 crores, right? Yet small cap, I believe. Yeah, it is by definition of SEBI, it's a small cap. So 
Relaxo is only five percent of India's footwear sales, right? As a as a market share in the overall footwear market. Uh, even if you include only the let's say utility oriented footwears, Relaxo is two and a half thousand crores in a eighteen twenty thousand crore footwear market. If you leave aside the high end shoes and the fashion shoes, etc., right? Uh, it's still Uh, no more than 10 12% market share and uh, competition is unorganized and they are ceding market share to relaxo like anything and hence this company is growing at the rate that it is growing and can easily easily become say 6 7 8 x in 10 years right the moment you look at it like that suddenly it feels a lot more digestible right uh similarly when you see that are uh, hdfc bank will cross jp morgan chase in loan book size within the next 7 or 8 years if it continues to grow at say 20% cagr right so can hdfc bank become bigger than jp morgan chase when india as a country doesn't have penetration of financial products uh, of even a small fraction compared to the us etc and then you say are let's look at china hdfc bank is 140th the size of the top four chinese banks loan books together so then suddenly it looks small right so so depending on how you slice and dice data you can get scared of it or you can get excited about it uh, don't look at data don't look at uh, 5000 crores of marcellus where will it be if it compounds at an x rate just uh, just look at it like this uh this is a country of 130 crore population where day to day essentials are heavily underpenetrated right more importantly there are too many inefficiencies in this country's economy which if exploited in a sustainable manner can give you a competitive advantage as a company that can last for a very long period of time those inefficiencies in the economy will not go away too soon right asian paints benefits from road infrastructure inefficiencies they will not go away in 10 years in 10 years india will not have flyovers going everywhere all over and people reaching out to 1000 km distances within 7 uh, 8 hours it won't happen right uh, so uh, uh, so inefficiencies whether it be dr lal path labs as a small part of the overall pathology industry or hdfc bank as only a 10% market share in the loan book of this uh, credit of this country uh, so on and so forth uh, those inefficiencies are uh, here to stay provided you can build a portfolio which relies on uh, exploiting these inefficiencies sustainably over a period of time uh, in a manner which can't be replicated by competition easily is an enormous uh, growth runway available out here okay great we can move on to next slide sir. what do you know okay great so uh, very quickly many of you might be aware of our philosophy uh, so the 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 team at marcellus uh, uh, has been working together for the last 17 years we set up marcellus around two and a half years ago uh, consistent compounders is our flagship fund and uh, and 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 it is based on three broad steps uh, first step is clean accounts we are quite obsessed about this according to us vast majority of indian uh, listed universe in the stock market uh, is uh, is is consisting of uh, subpar quality of accounts we want to stay away from them we built a proprietary fraud detection framework in this country around 10 years back uh, we've been practicing that as a first step towards whatever we do and here as well we use a set of uh, filters to ensure that uh, no matter how beautiful the numbers might look like uh, we don't want to uh, uh, come close to companies where accounts are not believable so that's something which we are uh, which we are quite obsessed about uh, that's our first step it narrows down the 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 listed universe to hardly 100 odd companies from let's say bsc 500 which meet our accounting cleanliness criteria uh, on those Uh, sort of hundred odd companies with clean accounts. Uh, we apply the second step, which is the historical track record of capital allocation. Here, what we are looking forward to is uh, is 
uh, a track record of longer than 10 15 years in the history of doing two things in parallel one delivering return on capital employed far ahead of cost of capital because that's a sign of competitive advantages which are difficult for competition to replicate at a point in time right uh, and more importantly the gap between return on capital and cost of capital which is the free cash flow that a business generates how easily can a firm find incremental capital allocation avenues to redeploy that uh, surplus cash back into the business without letting the return on capital drop over a period of time as in incremental capital redeployment also happens at a return on capital which is substantially above cost of capital right if you can keep this engine running as in deliver high roce the excess cash goes back into the business increases the capital employed and on that growing base of capital employed you retain a high level of roce if you can do that then you deliver earnings growth which is sustainable it is not coming from a small margin expansion or some small working capital compression or something like that it is coming from factors which are repeatable sustainable over the longer term and provided you can see a dna in the business which takes care of every disruption or evolution in both the external environment as well as the internal environment you can also avoid volatility in this rate of compounding right and as i showed you in one of the previous slides it's not just the compounding uh, run rate which is important to get a good outcome it is also the consistency of compounding which uh, which gives you a very good outcome right so so in that regard uh, uh, what we seek in this step is uh, longer than 10 15 year historical track record of clearing re return on capital and revenue growth filters uh, which might be indicative of the presence of a, a DNA within the firm that has taken care of all disruptions, macro volatility, competitive intensity going up and down, uh, succession planning within the firm, scale of the firm becoming bigger, right? None of that uh, could reduce the revenue growth rate or the return on capital of a particular company in the past. If we can figure out such businesses, then then we we include them in our in our coverage universe, which then uh, uh, gets researched on by our uh, analysts. Uh, we've got eleven analysts in our team, including myself, and uh, and our day job is just to understand this DNA, get convinced about its sustainability into the future basis. Uh, our understanding of what investments they've made in the last say three or five years to deepen the existing competitive advantage as well as to keep adding new revenue growth drivers and keep disrupting yourself radically to make your competitive advantages irreplicable over a period of time provided we get convinced from a bottom-up research aspect on these companies the beauty is that india has uh, got some sectors with a monopoly or a duopoly type of a construct with a monopoly or a duopoly and hence the dominance also comes with high degree of return on capital on an ongoing basis over the longer term with the reinvestment of capital happening as i previously mentioned you get a you get an outcome which is similar to the chart on the top right of this slide right so this chart is uh, uh, one of our portfolio companies asian paints last seven decades of fundamentals uh, i'm talking about only the top right chart let's not look at the bottom right for now let's digest what's happened on the top right chart every vertical bar is a decadal revenue Hindu gdp growth rate or the accelerated gdp growth rate of the last say 10 12 years whether it was a crude oil price rally or a crash, rupee depreciation or appreciation, first gen promoters of Asian paints or today beyond the third generation, professional CEOs changing hands. Actually, one of the promoters leading business in 1997. No matter what was happening inside or outside this firm, founding engine of fundamentals was on in a very consistent manner and a very healthy rate of compounding. 
and that ensured that you never had to worry about timing entry exits which you never had to worry about uh, uh, substitutes to a company like asian paints in your portfolio provided you held on to it for a long enough period of time it compounded at more than 20 25 cd consistently right so so this is the outcome that we are seeking from our portfolio companies which make risk factors redundant in their journey of compounding of fundamentals if we can find such companies and believe in their ability to sustain this engine of making risk factors redundant time and again then uh, the share price is just going to follow the fundamentals and hence uh, we can deliver a we can deliver a very low volatility and and high quality of compounding right so so that's uh, that's what it is in the interest of time i'll 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 keep it short in terms of uh, what the portfolio does uh, and maybe open the floor to q and a uh, yeah so just a small announcement so Anybody has any question? They can type in their question in Q and A box. Post this presentation. We'll ask, start taking those questions. Yeah, what do you want? Okay, so should I take the questions from the Q and A box, Vikas? Uh, no. So we we may conclude this session. I mean the presentation, and then we'll start taking the questions. Okay. So um, I mean, in in conclusion, uh, let me put it this way: that uh, that maybe I'll I'll just show you. a couple of slides on the fundamentals uh, as an outcome right so so look at this slide uh, this shows you our portfolio companies is uh, earnings compounding look at the column on the extreme right right over the last 5 years we've had profit compounding of 19% weighted average right over the last 5 years nifty has compounded at 1% right this is 15 to 20 obviously fy21 is not yet complete but even fy21 we've broken it down in the second third and fourth column of this table but let's look at the last 5 years to begin with which were full of disruptions gst demonetization they affected the b2c oriented companies a lot more than the b2b oriented companies of the economy and our portfolio is full of only b2c right demonetization was a proper b2c event right uh, these disruptive events in the external environment did have a massive drag on nifty 50s earnings compounding it did not have much of a drag on our portfolio earnings compounding and that is one of the reasons why over the last 5 years we've delivered what we have since inception at marcellus as well as if you If you consider the time period before Marcellus was set up, that we managed this portfolio at a previous place, uh, the compounding run rate has been a very healthy one, but more importantly, a very consistent one, right? Uh, and uh, and yeah, I mean, here and now, every disruption is a blessing in disguise, and the disruption that we are sitting on today is the COVID disruption. Uh, in in every such crisis situation. Uh, there are very few companies i believe in the country there will be no more than a couple of dozen companies out of which hopefully we have 13 14 in our portfolio the very few companies which benefit from a crisis by widening the gap between themselves and their competitors on a fundamental front uh, by taking initiatives which uh, which propel the business forward when competitors are dealing with the adverse effects of the crisis right uh, provided you can figure out such companies in a euphoria they will uh, they will participate in the euphoric run just like everybody else it will be difficult for them to outperform on fundamentals and maybe even on a share price basis uh, over the short term in a euphoric environment but in a stressful environment in particular they will outshine massively and uh, and deliver a very healthy and consistent compounding rate of fundamental and share price so so that's the that's the outcome intended here uh, we are currently running the portfolio of uh, 14 stocks we've actually added a 14th stock and this slide is is talking about 13 stocks which existed till last month uh, we're running a portfolio of 14 stocks and uh, we've sold only three companies and bought only four companies in the last uh, 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 since inception of this fund the churn rate is uh, mid to mid mid so uh, 5 to 7% on average in a year it's a very low churn high long holding period uh, per company in a way 
uh, portfolio and um, and yeah the outcome is not to be the best out there although during a stressful environment we end up being somewhere amongst the better quality uh, among the rate of uh, performance uh, compounding at a portfolio level but that's not the objective your objective is to compound at a healthy rate regardless of whether the market is giving you plus 50% or minus 20% Uh, overall, uh, if this portfolio can maintain low volatility and healthy rate of compounding, then that's the objective we want to achieve. So I'll stop here um, because you want to take any questions. Yeah, Pachi. So thank you so much uh, uh, for sharing your insights. Uh, uh, so the first question is: uh, any call which has gone wrong so far in your CCP portfolio? Yeah, so I won't say something which has gone wrong and has uh, uh, led to a damage to the portfolio return in a meaningful manner, uh, but I'll take a couple of uh, examples. Uh, so, for instance, we held on to uh, the firms in our portfolio which we exited eventually. Uh, uh, it generally takes us. It usually takes us. Uh, at least eight to ten months to get convinced about exiting a stock from our portfolio, uh, which is the time period where, if the stock had to be an exit eventually, you can look at the look in hindsight and say, why did it take you so long to figure this out? But uh, but yeah, touch wood. So far, we haven't had a call which has gone wrong, which has delivered minus thirty percent or minus fifty percent, and we've then decided to exit from it. Uh, the question is uh, somebody mentioned in the media from Marcellus team that they are holding Maruti and TCS of the world and InfoEdge, uh, whereas I think he has invested. Uh, I'm reading Mr. Shukla's question as in invested in this portfolio, and he is not able to find those stocks. Yeah, so we have uh, four portfolios. Uh, uh, one is consistent compounders. The second one is Kings of Capital. The third one is. Uh, Um, a little yeah. champs, and the fourth one is an advisory portfolio, which is neither a PMS or an AIF. It's a it's a it's an advisory portfolio, which we do with one of our partners uh, who are the fund managers, and we are advisors uh, on it. It's in that advisory portfolio that we have uh, Maruti, TCS, etc. Uh, we don't have it in consistent compounders. Consistent compounders is one of the four portfolios. So the question is, do you have a bespoke portfolio uh, for clients? The answer is no. That I think. No, we don't. We don't have bespoke portfolios. Yeah. Uh, the question is, what's what's the addition in the CCP portfolio? For that, I would say that you start investing and you get to know uh, the addition. Yeah, no, we'll disclose. Uh, we'll disclose it in our uh, first March. Uh, sorry, first uh, April newsletter. Uh, Uh, so yeah, just wait for that. Next week we will be disclosing it with the rational. Yeah. And uh, approximately, when do you expect the economy reality, uh, which is your real estate uh, sector and stock market gap to narrow down? Uh, real estate and stock market gap. Okay. Okay. So let me put it this way: over the long term. stock market has given us as per the data that we showed in coffee can investing book it has given around 8% cagr no matter which country you look at uh, more or less uh, adjusted for uh, 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 currency changes it's uh, it's compounded at around 8% cagr in rupee terms uh, uh, in in india in most other countries between 2% 6% 7% etc like that right uh, stock market in india has compounded historically i mean because you mentioned us 40 years might have been 12% last 10 years i think it is more like 8 9% last 20 30 years it is more like 10 11 12% so stock market in general as an asset class has given 2 3 4% higher than real estate uh, so yeah it has always had that narrow gap uh, when will it converge i mean short term i can i can never call or i can say is that provided you are invested in uh, high quality equities it will never converge high quality equities will always outperform versus real estate there won't be any mean reversion and uh, and yeah I, we are not proponents of real estate as an asset class against high quality equities provided you can figure out which equity uh, exposure is high quality
so there are a couple of questions uh, with regards to your existing holdings so one is that somebody is asking that uh, nestle is a strong franchise and have a monopoly in baby milk powder so it's advisable to buy in bulk and expect this to grow at 6 7 times in 10 years down the line otherwise what is the point investing correct no yes uh, we are we are very convinced about nestle's ability to first of all sustain its dominance in baby baby milk products which contributes to 70% of profitability of nestle secondly retain a very high degree of return on capital employed which at at a corporate level it's around 60% for nestle 50 60% return on capital but in baby milk foods we reckon it's significantly higher uh, uh, maybe around 100% 90% return on capital uh, we believe that will sustain with a high degree of uh, uh, capital uh, reinvestment so two thirds of nestle's Uh, 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 capital uh, free cash flow operating profit gets reinvested back into the business and only one third is paid out as dividends we expect that engine to be on for uh, for the next decade or so or longer uh, and uh, on that basis yes it is a consistent compounder in our view and we continue to hold on to it now whether you should buy only nestle or not is something that i would say i mean it, it would be great uh, to buy a single stock and sit on it but uh, it's it's more advisable to buy a portfolio uh, so that you are uh, you are risking yourself uh, uh, in a massive way uh, 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 even in the worst case scenario yeah can you showcase your performance slide somebody is asking that when did the ccp start and what has been the performance so far in terms of cagr returns so yeah so this is the uh this thing what do you call it nav chart right uh, and uh, this is the performance so chart on the left is the pms in rupee mm. rupee terms uh, it started on 1st december 18 since then we've delivered 25% annualized return against 15% for the broader market other question is your ccp holding suggest all bias towards large cap large cap blue chip chip companies while one can get unlimited upon compounding by sitting on quality gems for longer horizon so is this what's your views on including small caps is existing large cap so basically the ah. question is that what's your views on small caps and large cap and why do you have more of large cap in the ccp portfolio right so see it's a so we also have a small cap portfolio little, little champs it's just that it's uh, it's a different philosophy right uh, in consistent compounders we are expecting the standard deviation of the portfolio to be to be as low as say 4 5% for a time horizon longer than 3 years right in little champs we cannot expect a 4 or 5% standard deviation for a time horizon uh, longer than 3 years right so so that's where uh, uh ccp is different from lcp little champs which is also our product uh in a way that's one way to answer the question but otherwise let me put it this way as we mentioned we want more than 10 15 years of historical track record which gives us an indication of a dna to overcome disruptions and evolutions in the history which has overcome disruptions and evolutions in the history very consistently that's a prerequisite because we want to build our conviction on the sustenance of an existing dna not on the creation of a new dna right that's the difference once we seek existence of that dna basis a couple of decades of historical track record it's unlikely that a company which has had a 20 year 15 year or 10 year uh, healthy and consistent fundamental compounding in the past is still only a 200 million dollar or 500 million dollar market cap company most like more likely uh, it it would have become a 1 billion 2 billion dollar uh, market cap at least and that is why uh, in ccp the smallest stocks that we have are around 15 20000 crore in uh, in market cap 
and uh, average market cap is around 22 billion dollars which is uh, which is more like uh, one and a half to 2 lakh crore average uh, but do not confuse it with uh, the perception that larger companies are approaching saturation not necessary uh, in fact if i were to put it like this uh, uh, something like say an asian paints or an hdfc bank appeared large 5 years ago 10 years ago 15 years ago as well right asian paints even 10 years ago was uh, was a very large company with more than 40 50% market share in the paint industry uh, etc there is no question of saturation for a company which is deepening its current competitive advantages to begin with secondly adding new revenue growth drivers right so think about it page industries in our portfolio two decades back was only men's in a wear one decade back was men's plus women today it is men's plus women plus outerwear and now five years hence it will be men plus women plus outerwear plus kids wear right uh, if you've got companies like say a pd light growing from white glue into a broader adhesive and home building material play growing from uh, uh, men's inner wear in page industries case into a broader apparel play right growing from say hdfc bank as a uh, 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 demat oriented securities oriented offering 25 years ago towards becoming not just a retail bank now also the largest corporate bank right if you can find companies which keep adding in concentric circles newer revenue growth drivers right then this notion that large won't compound and it's only the small that can compound is incorrect more importantly also remember that within small cap companies right if you get the stock call wrong the stock can easily go down to minus 50% minus 90% or zero right uh, very quickly uh, uh, so the risk is also high there here provided you are picking up companies which have this dna that you can believe in right it reduces the risk and it maintains a healthy rate of compounding it might not be say as high as what we expect from little champs little champs we expect higher rate of compounding than consistent compounders but in an absolute basis this will be healthy enough and most importantly consistent enough sure and uh, how is your expense ratio compared with uh, any other equity mutual funds yeah so uh, when it comes to let's say churn as i said our churn rate is 5 to 7% uh, for i mean you can get from amfi website the mutual fund data on churn it's uh, it's at least 20 times or 15 to 20 times higher than that um when it comes to uh, other charges in our case it's uh, between 3 and 5 basis points annually to an account which again is a small fraction of uh, the expenses for uh, uh, for some of those funds uh when it comes to fees i mean uh, uh depending on which fee structure you choose it can be either slightly lower or at par with the kind of uh, other products that you mentioned yeah so here i would like to add that as an investor you have choice one is either you can go for fixed management fees which is about 2% or you can offer variable fee where there is no management fees and then you keep sharing the profits where the hurdle rate is 8% uh the other question is uh, why has been some amount of underperformance particularly in last one year in ccp compared to nifty so what happened was uh, between 1st jan 2020 and 31st march 2020 during those three months nifty um, actually you can see it here uh, where is that line chart right so so look at for instance uh, uh yeah so look at first jan 20 to let's say 31st march 
right? We had dropped by 12%, 12.9%, I remember. Nifty had fallen by around 30%, right? Uh, so when Nifty falls by 30%, uh, there's an optical illusion that also gets created in the subsequent time, starting 1st April 2021, uh, sorry, 2020. So let me just explain it in this manner. Think about uh, HDFC Bank and Indus in Bank share price comparison, right? From 1st of April, I think I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, totally up to date with these numbers. Uh, but I think Indus in Bank has become 2x or 3x or 4x, something like that from 1st April 2020, right? I mean, you guys can Google it and you'll find out the answer. It's a multi-bagger since 1st April. Uh, but if you look at uh, performance since 1st Jan 2020 till date, or if you look at a two-year performance, Indus in Bank is still in the negative. Compare that against HDFC Bank. Since 1st April, HDFC Bank has only gone up by 70-80%, I think. Yeah, from 800, it has moved to now 15 1600 right? Ha, so 80-90%, right? Uh, uh, but over a two-year period, it is up 50-60%. Correct. Right? So there is an optical illusion that gets created the moment a stock falls by substantial amount. So I can actually, I think we have a, uh, one second. Uh -huh. So if you look at uh, this slide, okay, how do I delete this one second? Eraser. Uh, okay. All right. So if you look at the chart on the right, yeah. Uh, if a hundred rupee during a crash falls to 30, then the 30 going to 60 or 70 will be a much higher rate than a hundred rupee crashing down to only 70, then the 70 going to let's say 120, right? 70 to 120 is less than 30 to 90, right? So if you fall a lot more, then from the bottom, there is an optical, optical illusion that you can have when you look at these charts, right? So, so that's the only reason. Otherwise, you can see the since inception, which is about two and a half years performance. Uh, it's a healthy, absolute performance and uh, also relative. All right. So a uh, couple of people are asking, uh, what's your current strategy? You're deploying everything 100% now or uh, otherwise you're deploying in a staggered manner? We deploy 100% now. We don't, uh, I mean, if a client chooses uh, an STP option, we have STP. At the bottom of this slide, actually, we've given that detail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just to uh, add what he's saying, so I'll handle this question. So in yeah. case you uh, wish to stagger your investment, then you'll have to inform us and we can then accordingly inform uh, the investment manager and we can stagger the investment over a period of five months or whichever period that you decide. This is your comfort. Uh, so the question is with regards to Dr. Lal Pat, you think the invention of these machines coming in and that can do a considerable amount of test under which under that case, people don't need to approach any pathology. You think that it can happen? Yeah, it can happen. Just that not in the therapies, uh, not in the spectrum of therapies, uh, that Dr. Lal handles. So maybe maybe in 10% of the tests where Dr. Lal is there currently, in five or 10 years down the line, it can happen. But uh, especially in higher value tests, uh, uh, I mean, it, it is it is difficult. Uh, Do you that. see any disruption in the business per se in the near, near future, knowing the fact that the size of opportunity is immense in the industry? No, there's a massive disruption and Dr. Lal is playing it to its benefit. Uh, the mom and pop shops are finding it very difficult after GST, GST and now COVID to come back into operation uh, in as smooth a manner as previously. More importantly, Dr. Lal is expanding like a retailer and trying to benefit massively out of uh, economies of scale once it has expanded in an efficient manner across the length and breadth of the country. 
and uh, and 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 on top of it uh, it's trying to become uh, the swiggy zomato of uh, of the uh, diagnostic industry by doing sample collection from home in a very very uh, consumer friendly and digital manner rather than the ad hoc manner that i would say we are used to from some of the competitors of dr lal in the western part of the country here dr lal instead is actually in the north india is uh, is giving a very high class uh, uh, digital in- interface to the client which makes the client stick and get rewarded uh, massively in the value added outcome that he gets through the testing process uh, two to three hours turnaround time compared to 12 to 14 hours turnaround time which we see in bombay being offered by many of these chains uh, some of them are listed uh, it's a massive uh, uh, difference in terms of turnaround times and uh, uh, utility to the customer through the interface um and even the scale scale of uh, operations benefiting on the efficiency side yeah, i think you're running short of time uh, yeah before we can have one or two questions uh, maybe the last one i'm already getting a call from the next one where i have to join sure so last question is any plan to reopen lcp for the new investors uh i mean if we don't see redemptions and if we don't see increase in liquidity of the underlying stocks then unlikely but if there are some clients who exit for some reason and if the the liquidity of the underlying portfolio increases then certainly yes we will but we'll keep you informed all right okay so thank you so much i take this opportunity to uh, okay. thank uh, all the participants who joined in and logged in today uh once again thank you so much rakshit for joining in and sharing your valuable thoughts with us so great amount thank you vikas thank you thank you so much thank you thank you bye take care